Shields up, Ironbreakers. We're kind of here coming at you with another episode of Khan's Cast. Dragon's Dogma 2 has been released, and I'm here with Fighting Cowboy. How you doing, dude? I'm good now. I've calmed down. I'm not yelling anymore. <laughs> things, are, <laughs> things are better. I mean, one could almost say Dragon's Dogma, more like Dragon's Drama, am I right? <laughs> or is that, is, that a, is that a bad, bad I, joke? I, I don't know anymore. I, I can, you know, it's funny, when I was... When I was Clipping the discussion I had uh, with Asmo, I considered it calling Dragon's Drama 2. Exactly. It was like, and I was like, no, I don't know if that lands. So the, I was like, we're just going to... I think it would be the perfect title. The problem is that it's not very SEO friendly, so it probably wouldn't have worked. Yeah. That's, that's the thing. But yeah, for those of you that might not have been paying too much attention, because I still have people that haven't paid attention... Uh, there's been a little bit of drama when it comes to Dragon's Dogma 2. We're going to go over uh, some of it. We've already, both of us, made several, vi well, not several videos, but a couple of videos talking about it. This even culminated with uh, you having a conversation with Asmongold. Uh, because, yeah, Asmongold was reacting to everything that was happening, and then the whole situation was getting completely blown out of proportion. But fundamentally, Dragon's Dogma 2 is a phenomenal game as far as I'm concerned. Can we agree on that part? <laughs> I don't. I don't think there's any arguments there. Yeah, I think. Exactly. Uh, I think. I think. I mean, our, our reviews were were pretty similar. Like you, you yeah. obviously were much earlier, but the the performance is obviously a big concern. Yeah. You know, I'm on I'm on a, a thirteen nine hundred processor and a forty ninety, and without DLSS, I was getting like thirty frames when, in the capital, which like nobody's arguing that's fucking terrible. Yeah. It's obviously. Terrible. I have a. I have a 5900X, uh, Ryzen 9 5900X, and a 6900XT. Uh, and the performance on the Capitol is also like between 30 and 50 and would not oscillates terribly. And on my other rig, though, it runs a little bit better. Like, even in town, I can kind of like get 60 on my other computer. Uh, I, I forget which processor I have on that one, but it's like a really recent one, a really like one of the top yeah, that's, Ryzen's. That's, that's the big thing. And, this is the. <clears throat> processing recently and i also have a 7900 xdx on my on my other computer are you so, using fr frs while you yeah that, that's that's the problem that's the that's one of the reasons why i said in my review that this is a red flag because i am getting this performance but i have frsr3 enabled which i never enabled this thing because when you have gpus on the level i mean i guess the 6900 xd is a little bit on the lower end nowadays but like it's still a good GPU and usually you don't have to turn on features like FSR. And as a matter of fact, I know that you're team green, so you don't know this, but in most games, FSR looks like complete garbage to begin with. Like it's just, it just makes the game look bad. In the case of I mean, Dragon's, I'm, in the case of Dragon's Dogma, it's not bad. It looks fine, even with FSR, but it's so not thing, a feature that with, I like to use. <clears throat> with DLSS is even if I can run something native, I'm probably just going to get a higher frame rate with DLSS. So like yeah. I turned on DLSS and I was getting, you know, on average 90 when I'm out in the world. And then since I have the, the, the 40 series, somebody, and this is, I, I get why they did it, but so there's apparently DLSS three is in the game, which is what the 40 series cards use, yeah. but it's not fully implemented. And so there's two mods on the Nexus you can pick up if you're on PC. One of them updates you to the the latest active version of dlss it's just the nvidia file but that yeah. wasn't in the game's pc launch and then the other force enables dlss3 so with that i'm now playing at a locked 120 which okay. is, it looks beautiful now but it's you know it, it's it's playing experimental so like every now and again i'll like run by an npc and their face will like melt and then reconfigure like it's like the terminator <laughs> or something but i'm like you know what? I'm gonna ignore that because the frames look good. So we're just gonna. <laughs> the frames are, are looking good. Yeah. The 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 problem the problem like like I was saying, to me is that I feel like this game with the rigs that we have, DLSS and FSR should not be a necessity. It should be an option if you have like weaker GPUs, then you can turn on DLSS and stuff like that. At least that's the way that that I see it. Uh, so I do think there are ish issues with performance, but I'm actually surprised you're saying before you applied the the mod fixes and stuff, you were getting 90? Because on the on my XDX, I was getting higher than that. I was getting like on average about 100 in the open world. I mean, it would, it would <laughs> depend. Like there were a couple times it peaked above 100, but I'd say yeah. 90 was about top. And then the towns, I was hitting the 60 and I dipped to like 55 and then back to 60 and then yeah. 57 and then 63. Like it was a very unstable frame rate more than anything. Yeah. It was never like, yeah. 
that there, there's definitely performance problems. It, it was in, in my review, I actually thought the performance was mostly because I was using an AMD card because usually that's the way that it goes, right? Oh, you got an AMD yeah. card? Oh, that's too bad. <laughs> that's yeah, just too bad. Short, short, short end of the stick. <laughs> yeah, because like usually the, the comment section just goes like, oh man, I can't believe you cheaped out, got an AMD card, now you have to deal with all these problems. Sucks to be you. So, yeah. you know, I, I tested it on both and I was like, ah, oh, it's probably my AMD thing, but whatever, here's what I got. But then I was surprised because more people were saying like, oh, no, the NVIDIA thing is also struggling. I was like, oh, OK, so it's a good thing I pointed it out despite being on Team Red because I could I, I was actually considering if I should even mention it because I was talking to other people that had um, that had NVIDIA's and they were telling me, no, this is fine. I was like, I don't know the amount of performance I'm getting on my AMD. I'm not sure that this is fine. I, I'm not sure that I agree with that, but OK. Uh, but you know, um, the, the FPS is, is definitely a problem. It's definitely, this is something that both of us mentioned. And I think most people talked about when it came to the performance. And it's interesting because I did receive accusations for starters. There were people that were telling me they wanted me to break embargo that no, they, they told me that I should have broken embargo to reveal the FPS problems. And I was like, <laughs> okay. Sure. Yeah, no, no. <laughs> that's that's not how this works. But anyway, I was allowed to talk about the FPS before the embargo because I did the preview. And in the preview, I said 30 FPS uncapped. This is what we're getting on the PlayStation 5. So people should already be aware there is a problem, you know, because I revealed it. As a matter of fact, I even only got to play at like 1080p, even though the, the final version on consoles is actually running at 4K. Uh, I don't know if it's 4K native or checkerboarding. I don't have like I would, I would, I would guess it's upscaling. It's probably upscaling. If it's upscaling, it's really good because I have a crappy monitor here at the office. And usually whenever something gets upscaled, it just looks terrible. And Dragon's Dogma looked fine. So even if it's upscaling, it's at least good upscaling. It's not crappy upscaling that they're doing. But I suspect there might be some of that checkerboarding stuff that they talk about or whatever. But fundamentally, I think the game looks good on console. I don't know if you tested it on console. <clears throat> no. No. So no. the the frame rate in the consoles is actually no, more stable, is actually more stable than on PC because they put it to, they're, they're targeting 30. And so they just, oh, yeah. I mean, you got, you have a single, single spec that you're, you're working towards there versus yeah. the, you know, the, the ones of thousands of PC specs, but the one thing that I noticed is that some of the textures were lower. Like for instance, if you're in the middle of the city, I noticed that the, you know, I have the walls and then you have like the little parapets on top of the walls. So the parapets would be really low resolution at times. It went down and I was like, Oh, okay, whatever. A couple of shortcuts. It's to be expected. It's a console experience. It's whatever. But I think that overall the, if, if all you can do is play on console, I don't think it's a big deal. I mean, it is 30 FPS, and if you have a problem with 30 FPS, you shouldn't get it. But at the end of the day, if you can deal with 30 FPS, and I, I play games on Switch, I don't care. 30 FPS, I, I always want more, but I will not not play a game if it's just 30, <clears throat> is the point that I'm getting at. But overall, I thought it was actually even more stable because it's not as fluctuating, but I would still prefer to play on PC. My, my point of view right now in terms of performance is I feel like, because a lot of people have been asking, oh, is it my PC going to handle this? I feel like... You got a 4070, you're probably okay because you're going to turn on the LSS and it should be all right. If you're lower than that, I don't know. And it also depends on what resolution you're planning on playing. I mean, if, if people are playing on PC, it's it's honestly like irrelevant. You can just get the game, play it for within two hours and refund it if it's not working. Yeah, you can test it right on Steam. I keep forgetting about that stuff, that there's the whole two-hour thing yeah. on Steam. And anytime someone asks, will it run on my PC? I say, get it refunded if it doesn't work. Yeah. It's, it's a it's, simple answer. It's probably, it's probably the best way for people to test PC. What do you think about the visuals overall? Because, I mean, we all talk about frame rates until we're blue in the face. But the thing that always, uh, I always find myself, because I'm still in the beginning part of the game. There's that, uh, there's that moment where... The character that is giving you quests, it tells you, oh, you, this is the moment of no return. Once you do this quest, everything's going to change. You probably know which one I'm talking about. Yeah. Uh, and I'm still in that part. I haven't done that quest because there's so much stuff to do out in the world. And I just keep going out and doing random stuff, whatnot. I've already done one of the romances in, in everything. Um, but one of the things that I always find myself is like, I'm wandering the world and I look around and I was like, the game is friggin' gorgeous. Is, is like, dude, what do you think about the visuals? 
I mean, I honestly, I, I already said it, but this is right now, this is my game of the year. I think the visuals are great. I think that the music has some good music beats. The combat is some of the best action RPG combat there is. Uh, the quests aren't too handholdy. There's some quests that you gotta you gotta dig to yep. figure them out. Like there's there's a ton of stuff to love in this game, but it's it's all just being overshadowed by you know micros and poor performance right now, which is a shame. But yeah. I think once once they get the performance cleaned up and then start addressing the micro situation, and they said they were adding uh, more of the art of metamorphosis into the in game shop so that people can just infinitely change their characters if they want. Um, which I mean, honestly, in probably like two weeks, this is, is going to blow over. I think a lot of this is just the internet being the internet. You know, a couple of weeks ago, it was uh, Hell Divers, and their anti cheat is Rootkit, and it's going to hack your PC. Oh yeah, I, re- and, I, I forgot about that. I forgot that that was yeah. the thing. There were so many people coming to me. Can't believe that you would play this game. You know that there's this Rootkit thing on your PC, and I was yeah. like, Bro, do you have there's Facebook? <laughs> It was a whole whole fucking thing about it. Before that, it was Pal World. You know how dare they 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 these is similar to Pokemon. Well, actually, it's more similar to Ark, but you know. Yeah. And and before that, I don't remember, but it's just it's the internet. It it picks something. Guarantee in about two three weeks, it's going to be Stellar Blade. And it's going to turn out that there's oh well for four ninety nine, you can get the extra revealing booty skin, and all the Coomers are going to be upset. How dare you hide that digital it's, fine ass behind a DLC? That's bullshit. I want my booty skin. It was actually an interesting thing because I haven't followed too much of the Resident Evil stuff. And I was watching your videos and you were saying like, in Resident Evil, you can straight up upgrade your weapon all the way through microtransactions. I was you like, can, oh, you can buy, I did, I did not know that. You can that buy full on fucking weapon upgrades. So, don't so, feel like farming the golden game. Don't worry, buddy. For one ninety nine, we're going to upgrade that pistol. So it was funny to me because I saw a lot of videos because obviously when you have a situation like this, a lot of people start making videos about it. So I'm watching a lot of videos from other people. I'm not going to be naming names, but I saw videos from other people. And then I was like, okay, so Cowboy said this thing about Resident Evil. Let me see what these guys said about Resident Evil. This is the best game ever. This game is perfect. And I was like, wait a minute. (laughs) What what do you mean? So where where's where's this where's this energy for Resident Evil with, with these types of microtransactions? Not just that, there's other games obviously, but I found that to be a very common one where I I think I checked at least like two or three different people that were just like talking about this, and then I go and I watch like what they said about Resident Evil, and I was like, wait a minute, <laughs> there's a very big disconnect here. I I don't understand. Well, one thing, what I'm not. Let, let me see. I don't no, know I looked, if, I looked it, if, it I looked had, it up. if it had the micros at launch. I want to see oh, that, when the, they were added. Yeah. Um, mm, 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 to gun enthusiasts, knife collectors, level up a little bit. Here's your ticket to the gun show. It explains with this shot of the access to open exclusive upgrade. Too fancy buying it. It'll be added to the treasures menu. Let's see. This article was. Articles should have the date on them. Right? Why do articles not have the date immediately at it's, the top? It's so that they're evergreen, so the date doesn't matter. That's why. But fucking garbage. Fu- fundamentally, we sh- we should talk about the microtransactions because obviously there's a lot of stuff going on there. Uh, number one, when the microtransactions came out, I was completely blindsided. I was like, I have no so, idea. So, so I found it. This this okay. and this is this is probably why. So Resident Evil Four was released March twenty fourth, mm-hmm. and it looks like the the micros were added two weeks after it was released okay so they there was a small so window now, so now capcom and, knows they just have to wait two weeks and people will yeah <laughs> and it won't be an issue yeah that's 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 the... oh god no but can uh, we put this in at launch no let's wait two weeks we've we've learned no but the the this on, on a more serious note right so i said i didn't know about this and you said everybody knows about this <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, <laughs> when you, the, the, the interesting thing was when I saw that tweet from you, I was like, wait, what? So I go to my email and I'm just like, it's, it's not here. And then I go back to your tweet. <laughs> then I go back to my email. It's, it's not here. <laughs> like, yeah. What's going on? I don't understand. I was so confused. And then, you know, we talked and it was like, oh, it looks like people from you got like some different email. Or well, whatever. so, so, and what, what got me is when, when all this drama first started coming and, you know, my, I made my, my point clear when it came up, I was like, listen, you know, yeah, we were informed these were in the game. I looked at these, there's fucking nothing here worth spending your money on. It's just trash. Just ignore it. Don't spend any money on it and just play the game and you'll have a great time. 
but then there were people that I know that are also in the U.S. that were like, how could Capcom pull a sneaky like this on us? And I'm like, no, 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 motherfucker. <laughs> You're... Come on now. Let's, let's be honest. Your ass didn't read the fucking document. <laughs> the, the, the interesting thing is I could see myself not noticing it. I could see myself skipping over something like that, which is why when I saw your email, I was like, okay, let me make sure that I'm, I'm yeah. in the right here. And then I went and I was like, okay, this, this the, no, my, my thing is different. I did not see it. I could have missed it just as well, but I would, I would have talked about it. But the thing is the fact that people were caught off guard made the whole situation way worse because yeah. if I had noticed it, I would have said something like, okay, here's what these are. Here's what they do. These are garbage. As a matter of fact, that's the video that I did afterwards. They're worthless. Now, should they be there? No, they still shouldn't be there. I don't think there's any justification for them being there. And I actually think that Itsuno probably doesn't even want them there because oh, of the sure stuff. He doesn't because it makes it makes him look stupid because of the interview yeah. about fast travel the and fast then they, travel they added stuff. a poor crystal. But I think honestly that the biggest my biggest issue with all the microtransaction drama, more than the existence of micro, more than not talking about them in the review, was the misinformation that yeah. started around it because you know when when i started seeing people that were popping off like we never saw this we never saw this i'm like well i fucking saw this this was in, this is what i had in my email yeah like did either we got different emails or you didn't look at it but like i was informed about this i made the conscious decision not to talk about this but then that the bigger half of it was you had i mean there, there were people that did a lot of it i think was also people that just didn't understand what dragon's dogma was oh yeah so the whole like you need to pay to fast travel like that's not that's not that's not what a port crystal is and, you're, and, you're making and a little let me tell hub. you something even today even today you're, i've seen videos like it. just a couple of hours ago i saw videos being uploaded just a couple of hours ago of people saying capcom's monetizing fast travel and i was like i mean no that's that's they're they're selling you one port crystal one 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 out of the the 10 you can find in the game um you, the, you so, said it I was mean, like the, five or six so it's 10 per cycle I, or the there so if you look at the at the micro shop itself um on dragon's dogma so i i know of they say five you can, off the top of my they head they say you can place 10 do they stick yeah. over through new game plus cycles I would assume you get well because I got I got another one in New Game. Well, so they don't stay on the map. That's that's okay. One thing. They don't. That's, and, and that's New Game and New saying. Game Plus, they they shoved back into your inventory. Okay. But I there I did certain certain quests in New Game Plus. I was rewarded them again. And okay. it, if you look at the port crystal, it says you know let me let me go to it. Let's go to it. So I'm not. Uh, you can set up to ten port crystals, including those that are obtainable in game. But so there might be nine in game and that's considered the 10th. But like, honestly, once you're, even once you have the map unlocked, you, you really need, I would say three. Here's, here's the thing about the port crystals, right? So I don't have the whole map open yet because yeah. I'm really take I'm like 40 hours into my actual save now and I'm really taking my time. And the thing is, most of the time, I don't want to use fairy stones. Because I'm leveling up vocations. So if I have to go yeah, somewhere, I wanna, I it's, wanna useful, fight shit on the way. it's useful to go on the way and fight things. And I hear people say, oh, I, I wish I could just fast travel. It's like, you, you level no vocations if you just keep fast traveling. You're not going to yeah, be able to level no, up. I mean, it doesn't I mean work. early game, the only area I think that one is really useful is the, the Elvish, the Elv Elvish or Elf Village? What are we calling it? The Elvish. Elf Village? Elvish. Let's call it the Elvish area. And don't reveal where okay. it is on the map because people... I'm might, not. But that's, that's one of the only areas that I think you would actually use one in the early game. Yeah. Once, you, once you cross the border, well, then things get a little bit, little bit, you know, there's a couple different areas that they would be useful. But early zone, like, because you can take... The thing is, the ox cart's going to take you up to Melv. Yep. And you have the other ox cart that's going to take you all the way to the border town. Yep. And so those are your two big areas. Now, there's a couple of very niche instances like if you're doing the sphinx quest might be useful to have one there so you can go off adventure and then just warp right back yeah, to the sphinx I, uh, 
I, f- I found the Sphinx the other day. We're not gonna we're not gonna reveal spoilers in case anybody's concerned. Everybody should know about the Sphinx because it was like literally I'm in the spoil f- everything. <laughs> <laughs> it was literally in the first trailer of the game. I see, I seem to remember they they showed the Sphinx yeah. because I used it on the thumbnail. <laughs> so it's like it's literally in the first trail. I didn't even know that was as important. I was just like, oh, there's a good monster here with a face. This one goes in the thumbnail. Boom, done. So I know yeah. that the Sphinx was in the first trailer, so it shouldn't be a spoiler. But so I found the fi- the Sphinx the other day, and then I realized, oh man, would have been really good to have a port crystal to leave here because I'm not going to do the Sphinx right now. <laughs> so it's just yeah. like because that thing takes a while to get there. So there's a. All I'll say is one of those riddles will give you a port crystal. I'm not going to give you the solution. Yeah. But you can do it the very first time you meet the Sphinx. Okay. With something that is already on your person. And okay. I'll let you figure out the rest for yourself. Okay, just, just, just stop. But anyway, so... It's your penis. Give the pink, Show the Sphinx your... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, take off your pants. <laughs> <laughs> Present thyself. <laughs> exactly. That's exactly what the Sphinx wants. When, but... she, when she asks about the curse of love, it's pretty <laughs> obvious when she's... We know what she wants. <laughs> the Sphinx Ussie awaits. No, but um, the, the the whole thing about the, the fast travel, right? The, I, do, I do think that the port crystal is one of the more egregious items because it really does fly a little bit in the face of what Itsuno says. Um, but at the end of the day, I don't think it's a big deal. I also don't think it should be there. I don't think it's... I'm not, I'm not going to defend it. I think it's stupid and I don't think it should be there. It's ridiculous. But beyond that... It kind of sucks that that basically kind of generated the whole narrative around, oh, they're monetizing fast travel. Because when people say stuff like that, what everybody ends up thinking is like, oh, so if I want to fast travel, I have to pay money? Yeah. I, and, I, and that was very much the energy that people were bringing into it. Then well, it, was, the, it was more than that. The, the art of metamorphosis. So that, yeah, that, that was the other one that I was going to bring up. Yeah. So people, people weren't discussing the fact that they're in game. You can just get them at the in game shop. I think they actually reset in the in game shop after a certain number of rests. I, I know, know they do going into new game plus cycles. Okay. And on new game plus, you get to freely change your character or pawn however you want, even change its race if you want. Um, but that wasn't brought up. But what, what started happening is it started off as you need to pay to change how your character looks. Yep. And then eventually that evolved into you need to pay to make your character to start playing the game. Yep. That, that, that I, to I, me I, was, yeah. when I started hearing people saying that, I was like, wait, okay. And the, the, the interesting thing is, there's a lot of people that go into this thinking like, the worse these microtransactions look, yeah. the better. And it's like, I get it. I can sympathize with that position, by the way, because everybody knows I'm anti-microtransactions. I do not like that stuff at all. The problem is, when you start down the path of lying you're hurting your own point because basically once people realize, wait a minute, what you're saying is actually not true at all. That's not what this item does. What else have you been telling me that is not true? And that is fundamentally the road that a lot of people are taking, which is actually just going to muddy the waters. I think that if you can criticize something on the merits of what it is, that's what you got to do. And I think that there's plenty to criticize about the microtransactions, despite the fact that they're worthless. As a matter of fact, the fact that they're worthless is something that you can criticize, which is like it's a waste of money. It's an actual waste of money. And I showed that to people because I had the game open. And I was like, yeah, see this thing they're selling you here? I can go get it right now here in game for 500 Rift Crystals. And 500 Rift Crystals is like nothing. And you can get it right now. It's right here. First big town that you get to. And I just show where the item is and all of that stuff. And it was frustrating to see that people just kept going with that narrative of like, oh no, but th- they're actually doing this and they're actually doing that. It's like, no, okay, whatever. Yeah, I, I, I gave up after a certain point trying to, like, it was just, there was no arguing with people about it because yeah. they would rather, and the, the thing I found, I found ironic is it was the same people complaining, you know, this is so dishonest by Capcom while also spreading dishonesty about what the microtransactions <laughs> exactly. are and it's like <laughs> it's it, it's strange and it's probably not something that you should be doing but whatever people are gonna do what people are gonna do fundamentally i don't like the micros i don't think they should be there especially in a full price title 
Uh, but fundamentally, the micros are completely worthless, and the game has not been balanced around the microtransactions at all, which is one of the biggest fears that always happens when it comes to this stuff, is that you have that situation where, oh, how much did they pull back from the game in order to, you know, make these more appealing? But the thing is, these are not repeatable microtransactions, so you actually can't make them appealing. Because Honestly, I think a, a lot of this would have been avoided if they didn't piecemeal it out. Because if you look at that list, the only thing not on that, like like the majority, vast majority of those micros are, uh, it's just the, the, the addition. It's the, the big addition. Like, hang on, let me pull up. I pulled this down the other day. The pre-order um, stuff? Yeah. Yeah, so, so and here, let me actually... I was I, mean, I, mean, I was initially here, worried about the uh, the explorers camping kit because the 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 website says, oh, it's lighter, it's a lighter camping kit, and I was like, okay, what what exactly does lighter mean? Because I don't know what that what that is. How light? Yeah. Because so I had I, a camping kit it. that was six kilos, and then people in chat were telling, well, this one's five five point five, and I was like, okay, five point five is nothing. So pff, whatever. Okay. I've, I've dropped it in the chat, but looking at it, the the vast majority of that. Is just the um, the ex expanded edition. The only thing that that isn't in the deluxe edition is the 500 rift crystal purchase, the 2500, and the port crystal. Everything else that's in there is just stuff that's included in the Boon for Adventurers, the deluxe edition New Journey pack. Yeah, it's it's just pre order nonsense that. Which if get... they if they had just if they had the micro shop as just you know deluxe edition upgrade. And then like two micros, I don't think there would have been nearly as much fuss, but piecemealing out the deluxe edition upgrade to create this long list of microtransactions, I don't think that helped their case. Yeah. And there's a there's another situation that a lot of people don't understand how rift crystals work. So they will see a, a pawn on Yeah, they just they assume it's a premium currency. Yeah, no, but they see a pawn, right, in the rift, and they're like, oh, this pawn costs 5,000 rift crystals. Yeah. And they don't understand that the cost of the pawn is based around how much higher the pawn is than your level. It's like if you're trying to hire a pawn that's 20 levels above you, it's going to be really expensive. But if you level up and then you hire that pawn when it's level appropriate for you, it's free. It doesn't cost any rift crystals because that's how it works. I even had people say, dude, I'm going to go farm 3,000 rift crystals to, to hire your pawn. And I was like, no, just level up and get them for yeah, free. <laughs> don't even worry about it. You don't have to do that. So so, so yeah. speaking of, are you gonna, is your pawn going to stay a fighter forever? Yes. Okay. Because so, I don't need fighters in my party, Rory. I'm sorry. Oh, man. You're going to do me they dirty just, like that? I've, I've had Sirash in my party. Sirash is probably one of the best warriors in the game right now. Yeah, I, I, I saw your gear. He's, I mean, here's here's the situation, though. The gear, the gear showed up. It took like four days. Not, listen, he's not, uh, he's not very smart. <laughs> <laughs> but simple Sirash is the best. He's so lovable. No, he is. The, the reason I'm saying My he's not very smart. Oh, found a chess here. Go get him, buddy! No, Good job! <laughs> I love Sirash. I actually my favorite my favorite Sirash moment is when I go to the the little the church in the slums and then he's like, I'll oh, gather these now and he just starts <laughs> picking up all the green wearish while you're inside. And then he comes up to you and he's like, Master, I got these for you. And you're like, thanks, buddy. Appreciate that. No, dude, Sirash is awesome, but what happened what tends to happen with him is he likes to go meet Brian. You know, have you heard of Brian? Oh, yeah, I know what you're going to say. <laughs> I keep, I, you know, sometimes I sacrifice people to Brian, but I never sacrifice Sirash. He goes willingly. It's like I was, I was exploring the Coastal Cavern, which is a super small dungeon. This was today in today's stream. Super small dungeon. And the worst part is one of my mods, Mr. Tummy Giggles, goes, I guarantee Sirash is going to fall into the water here. And I was like, no, Sirash is smart. Literally the second I finished my sentence, boom, into Brian he goes. I was like, what do you mean? It's honestly, it's a thing with the, I've noticed that the the bigger pawns, like depending on your body proportions, pawns that are maxed out on everything, they end up struggling on jumps a lot. Yeah. But, but they can, they're, they're workhorses. <laughs> so you can be like, Sirash, I found like six weapons, carry all this. 
and carry my camping gear and take like six pages worth of materials. And he's like, oh, I got him for you, Arisen. No, but uh, the when it comes to like his, uh, his voice, he's actually one of the coolest ones that I've interacted with because he's always so cheery. He's super happy about everything. Yeah. Doesn't matter yes. what's happening. He's like, oh man, this is great. Let's go. It's an adventure. <laughs> it's yeah. really cool. And I've actually been able to get him to use the, um, the, the launch board because yeah. a, a lot of pawns don't use it. Like my pawn, sometimes for some reason I will not get so it to use the damn you, thing. You just have you just have to hit go. Yeah, I know. I actually, I, I tested this. Yeah, but I know how it works. But some a lot of pawns don't do that. Just don't like, like even it. even other mm -hmm. fighters they will not do it. Other warriors will not. Your pawn most of the time does it. So like the other day, for instance, I'm in this place and there's like a locked door. Um, it's like surrounded by all sides and there's a locked door, and I was like, this is not going to work. But I just go up to one of the walls and I'm like, Sarash, go. And so I was like, okay, master, no problem. He puts himself, I was like, I can't believe it. Nobody else does it. How is he trained? That's insane. I, I use it a lot. I think that's why. I yeah. think I think it may be because of how often I like, because there'll be times we're like fighting goblins and he's like, you want to go up? And I'm like, no, no, it's good. It's goblins. Let's go up. Let's go up. Okay. Wee. <laughs> He kept he kept also sending me up when I was playing sorcerer as well, which was freaking insane. <laughs> you can cash from the air, right? <laughs> but before we jump into that, there's one more thing that I wanted to tackle, which is specifically about the the fast travel. We kind of talked about that already. Uh, it, it's not about the monetization, but like, how do you feel about the fast travel in the system? Because one of the things that I feel a lot of people are missing is that they are saying. Capcom is monetizing fast travel. This game is boring because of the traveling, blah, 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 blah. And it just feels to me like people don't understand. That is the design decision. And a lot of people are basically bashing the game for something that is a design decision. Whereas I would just like to reinforce, I just don't think this game is for you. If you're the type of person that wants to like, I want to fast travel here. I want to be as efficient as possible. No. Yeah. This game is yeah, that, not for you. So the typical way I, I use fast travel in this game, which is what I would recommend most people do, is you, you pick a direction. So you pick a direction, you go, I'm going to explore out east. And then every time a pawn's like, I know about a treasure chest, I know about a cave, I'm like, go, show me where it's at. Yeah. And I'm hitting every single nook and cranny I can see. <clears throat> when I get to the corner of the map, I look at the map, I look for any like paths that didn't end in a, uh, in a cave, I'll maybe check those. And, you know, if it gets dark, I'll, I'll camp, I'll get health back up. And then when I'm like, all right, I have fully explored this. We are good. Then I'm going to use a fairy stone, go back to town, deposit all my materials, upgrade weapons, pick up new vocation stuff. And then I'm going to pick a new direction and do it again. Yeah. And that's, that's that. And that, that's the idea behind like the camping and the fast travel is like, you know, it isn't, it isn't like Assassin's Creed or, or rise of the Ronin or horizon where, you know, here's your quest marker, you're going to go there, do job. Like, it is very much a game about go out and just have a fucking adventure. Yep. And, that, and, and you know, your, your, your fairy stones are more there. I think a lot of people are like, oh, I want to I fast travel. Your fairy stones are more, you're like, okay, adventure's done. Let's get the fuck out of here and go home. Yeah. Not, not a, I want to go there, and then I want to go there, and then I want to go there, and which then I want to go there. Which is one of the reasons why a lot of times anybody that is actually playing the game can confirm this because at this point, I'm going to assume that a lot of people just think, oh, you guys are biased. You're just defending all this stuff. So it's like, okay, fine. Don't ask us. Ask literally anybody else that is playing the game. But for me, my experience has been pretty much every two or three dungeons that I'm doing whenever I'm exploring dungeons, by the time you get to the end, there's going to be a chest. You're going to open that chest and most times there'll be a fairy stone there. Which is, which is kind of like the game's organic way of saying, okay, your adventure's done. You can leave now. Here's your fairy yeah. stone. You can yeah, go I think back I'm to sitting town. on like 30 or 40 right now. I just I keep them all. I keep, I keep two on me at any given time. Yeah, so that's, that in case, that's they, what I've been doing. Yeah. 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 I, that I way, in case, in case I need a port crystal, I keep two, and I usually keep one port crystal on my person, just in case there's some weird situation where I'm like, I want to warp to town and come right back where I'm at. I can do yeah. that. But most of the time, you, you that's, you know, I've, usually I've you're just going to use one to leave. I've placed one port crystal so far and I've never used it. <laughs> it's, just, it's just sitting there. And I was like, I'm eventually going to use it because it, 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 it's got that, that there's a quest there for an elf. He wants me to go there as an archer. And I was just like, I haven't become an archer yet. So you're just going to stay yeah, there. That's, that's, the, that's, that's, the, that's the archer quest line. Yeah. That, that's, you should, you that's should, what you I should do that one. Yeah. It's a good I, one. 
I will. I will. I'm, I'm going to get m- all of the quests that I can. I will get because that's kind of like what I've been doing, which is why I haven't done the big uh, the big moment yet in the main story, which I know there's going to be something important happening. I don't know exactly what it's going to be, but the reason I haven't done it is because I, I, I'm still I can exploring. probably think of like 50 things off the top of my head that you haven't done that's still in the first act. Yeah, that, it, would, so... it wouldn't surprise me. Have you have you done the uh, again? Basically, the, careful. The, no, I'm, I'm just I'm just saying. Have you done the the corrupt the corrupt uh, medic quest yet? Yes, and that did not go well. It have did not end the, up uh, well. <laughs> have you done the courtesan quest yet? Courtesan oh, quest. You, you I, would I don't know. know if I have. I don't. Yennefer. Yennefer two point oh. Do you know Yennefer two point oh? Yeah, I know her. I've met her twice you, already. Yeah. But have you done her quest? Uh, no, I don't think I have yet. No. Have you done the uh, <clears throat> the dude that was sent off to die so some guy could swing in and shag his wife? See that one. I don't want to talk about what happened on the podcast, but <laughs> there was a game problem with that quest. I'm not. I'm not joking. Mm. There was a serious game problem that kind of ruined my fun with that quest, and I was like, "Oh, that freaking sucks." Womp, womp. Let's. I mean, I, I guess I can just mention like there's something that happens where you're supposed to fight a powerful enemy in that fight. That enemy just spawned and then just stayed there and did nothing. Mm. He did. He literally did nothing. So I just like started attacking him and auto attacked him to death. And I was like, "Oh wow, this kind of yeah." They're sucked. they're they're one of the most deadly enemies in the game. Yeah, I've heard say. people keep telling me, yeah. "Oh, this is the hardest thing." And I was like, "Oh, I'm sitting here auto attacking and now it's dead." Oh, right. <laughs> so that kind of sucked. That adventure kind of sucked. But you know, it, it was going to be a cool adventure. Like I ran all over the map to go do that quest actually, because I was like, "Oh my god, it's a timed quest! Let's go! We got to go now." <laughs> Have you found the the cave? There's one cave that's really cool near the start that contains double bosses. Uh yeah, I think I have. I think I have. You, you get you get two of the books for the sorcerer quest out of it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I, okay, I did yeah, you know what I'm talking about. Yeah, that one. Did you that one ride the a first time to its nest yet? Yes, I have, and then I killed him in it. I wrote him there, and I killed him in it. And I and I was yeah, actually you've actually you you've done you've done quite a lot. It sounds like I've uh, I, I was actually quite under level. Like the first time I flew the 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 Griffin, I got I got murdered. There was no like all of my pawns were dying. Like I was super low level. And because you're leveling up vocations that at least I was, I'm leveling up vocations that I'm actually not going to use. That caused the problem because I was basically in there, and it was me and my pawn, and we were both fighters fighting against the Griffin. It's just like so if you're, in the air. <laughs> if you're if you're doing that for augments warfare once you get it will level all your vocations simultaneously so I if you're like you know <clears throat> yeah like if you're if you're playing through like you know you get to a point and you're like okay i need to do mage for 10 levels so that i can get the stamina regen skill and you have no intention on really focusing magic i would just get warfare and your mage will just go up as you play that yeah, I might of, I might eventually do that, but right now I already leveled up most of the things that I wanted. I just want to get uh rank 4 on archer and then I'm done. Then I'm like What's what's done. rank 4 is it the stamina boost? The stamina boost. I want to get a stamina it's like boost. 15% or so. I was doing math to figure out the best stuff for Sarash the other day. Yeah. So um <clears throat> I'm the way that I wanted to do my um what's his name? I'm I'm going to be a mystic spearhand. I haven't even played as Mystic Spearhand. I've already unlocked it. But I'm talk I was, Mystic Spearhand. Ooh, I got some juicy on that. No, but like I'm I'm gonna be a Mystic Spearhand, and my idea was I'm gonna get the magic stat from Sork. I'm, <clears throat> I'm gonna get the strength stat from Thief. And then I'm just gonna get a bunch of stuff from other classes. But I was like, I want the magic stat from Sork and the thing from Thief. Those were the two big ones because I had to play with two vocations that in reality I didn't really feel like playing that much. But holy crap, sorcerer is so much fun. Dude. Is it? I haven't done any dude. magic class. I've been I've been playing as dude. I maxed out archer and now I'm maxing out thief, and thief is and, insane. And here's the fun thing: I didn't even play with the final skills from sorcerer because I wasn't interested. But there's a skill that sorcerer gets at one point, which is you plant the bomb in the monster. Oh, yeah, every 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 hit multiplies the damage. And every the hit increase. Yeah. And the cool thing is, like, so you'd put this in say a saurian, and then you'd hit him with staff attacks. And then after a while, you see the sword and go like, just like going up into the air with ragdoll and stuff. It's like, oh, 
I called it the Saurian space program. It was fantastic. I love that skill. Jesus Christ. So that was that. You got like a flame wall type thing. So whenever there's goblins, I'm like, flame wall. They're all gone. Every goblin dies instantly. I'm like, this is beautiful. I love it. It's the best spell casting of any RPG in my book. Yeah, no, like, I'm going to do it eventually. But right now, yeah, I had, I had, everyone talk, talks about their, their dragon's dogma moment. I think yeah. mine today was playing as thief. Um, I was ahead of the group and there was a cyclops and I was like, oh, time to die. Climbed up on type of the cyclops, did yeah. the, uh, the bomb, put the bomb on its eye, did the, uh, gut and run. So stab the eye, leap off the cyclops, hit the ground, detonate the bomb. He's like, ah, throw out, implicate, grab his yep. leg, pull out Didn't from snap. under him. Yep. His face smacks the ground. And then I just run on over and do a skull splitter and he's dead. Dude. Before the pawns even get over, and people in chat are like, "What? Did you just solo a fucking cyclops in like ten seconds?" And I'm like, "You're goddamn right, I did." <laughs> yeah, dude. But that, that I had that moment, like literally one of the first, one of the first sessions that I was playing the game. Something similar to that happened to me. I even talked about it in my review where I just I went up there. I did it differently because I didn't have like the whatever you said, the skull ripper, whatever that you jump off. So I put the yeah, yeah, cut and run. I put the the bomb in his face. And then I jump off manually. And then as I'm in the air, clink the, the thing to detonate the bomb. Wow. He starts staggering. I land in snare because it's not implicated at that point. It was still in snare. Yeet him into the ground, then go in there, critical attack to the face. Didn't kill him because, you know, he was much stronger then. But yeah. I did kill a griffin just like you described. Not solo, but I shredded the griffin in seconds because of the way that thief works once you unlock the secret skills it's See, so i'm not i i'm not a fan of the secret skills though i don't i don't think they're that good i mean from a okay. defensive perspective yes but i don't feel like blades of the pyre is that strong it is it's really but compared to, compared to just like a fire affinity uh yes it is very strong because it's both physical and magical damage it seems like so you can kill mm. almost anything with it. It's really... <laughs> I was shredding stuff. It was absolutely insane. But See, yeah. if I'm putting... The thing is, you have to... Like, you really have to use both of those skills. Yeah, together. because otherwise you're going to kill yourself. <laughs> yeah. And if you're doing that, like, imp Implicate is an absolute starter. That move is yeah, yeah, yeah. 2 OP. You can, you can instant kill Saurians with it, instant kill Harpies with it. Anything that's not gigantic, you can Implicate, and then just do your heavy attack and, like, gut you're and tear out of stomach. You're basically Scorpion. You're just like... Get over here, stab. Yeah, and you, yeah, and you stab them. They're dead. You, yeah, you catch so, them mid air too, which is great because if they're coming in with ragdoll, and you're like, okay, he's gonna stab him mid air and critical strike mid air. It's beautiful. I, I think I, if I was gonna do, I'd probably keep implicate and maybe cut and run, just because I think part of the thief fantasy is climbing on stuff and tearing out chunks of its face. No, I use I use blaster, blaster, uh, blast, blast powder, blast powder, powder. Charge or whatever the, the the more advanced version. Yeah. Because I just like explosions. It's like my gun lance. That's my gun lance class. It's the thief. <laughs> but yeah, like I'm adventuring with the thief and you can just be, be keep adventuring. I'm like, oh, I'm at 10% health. Who cares? Yeah. I'm not going to die. <laughs> like, nothing's going to happen to me. I'm at 10% health. It's fine. It doesn't matter. Wait, wait, wait till you uh, unlock magic archer. 10% health brings a, a whole new meaning. Oh, I, I bet it does. So... We're kind of like going all over the place, but I, I wanted to ask you another thing, which appears to be a, a big stopping point for a lot of people. One safe slot. I mean, I'm fine with it, but this yeah. isn't like, the thing is, as, as big as this game is, like this isn't the kind of game where, where I'd want to have multiple saves going simultaneously. I mean, we can freely switch between vocations. I'm not sure what a second save slot would really offer me. See, the, the thing is, because a lot of people uh, are upset about the, the one save slot, and I was like, hey, dude, I, I get you. To me, it doesn't matter at all, because I don't want to have multiple save slots. If anything, it would have been nice to have a new game option. Yeah, and they said they're going to add that. <laughs> which... I, think, I think they supposedly added it today. People were saying that there was a patch, and it was added today, but I was already streaming at the time, so uh, I didn't even see that. But like, well, that that was a, that was another one of the points in the misinformation because like you could delete your save in all instances. Yeah, you can. It was convoluted, and the the person who, which I think it's it's earlier in our discussion here, the the person who started the the misinformation around not being able to do your save 
They said, I looked online for ways to delete save files on PC, but I was unable to delete cloud saves from logging into Steam on a browser. This was all due to this dude not just right-clicking properties and turning off his cloud save. Yeah, I know. All, all because one person was too fucking dumb to just turn off his cloud save. He created a, a whole ass conspiracy that Capcom locks you in the cloud and therefore you have to buy you the metamorphosis. The Imagine being I was like, in this cloud. is you're not in, in fucking cloud jail. Just delete your save. It was it was um it it was weird though. One of the things that I realized is because before recently I was playing most of my stuff on consoles and only it's been more recently that I've been like, no, I'm gonna start playing everything on PC because Physical copies don't really matter anymore because the game's never even in the discs anymore. Yeah. So whatever, I don't care. And if I'm going to buy everything digital anyways, might as well buy it on PC because it's cheaper and it's more convenient. So um, with with that, you know, I hadn't, I never really had to deal with Steam save files because it's like, I don't care. I don't feel like editing my save files. I don't want to mess with save files. I don't care. Yeah. And the fact that I had to mess with save files and I was like, bro, this is a fucking mess. Like, can we have some standardization in Steam for save files? Like, if so, anything comes out of this discussion... Sometimes they're in user data. Sometimes yeah, exactly. they make their own folder. Yeah, it, it, It's random. It's like, hey, look, we threw a dice today and we decided that today the save files are going to be on your C drive, on the root. Why? We don't know. Yeah. We just felt like it. It's completely random. So I was looking for the save files everywhere. I had to sort save files through... Um, through not creation date, but through through change date. And not even the, the, the files. I had to sort folders that way so that I could find where the file was. And then I found the files. And then I deleted them. And then I lost all my character creation data. And I was like, yeah. fuck! Now I lost that's, that's two also, hours the day before time. embargo. Yeah. <laughs> this is miserable. So the, the trick... The trick... So once you go into user data, that first folder, that's just your, your profile. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I know. And then the rest of it is games. It's like I people but are the, telling the me those way are to, the way to find games. So yeah, if you if you type in Dragon's Dogma to Steam, and you just click that general link, it'll say SteamPower.com app two zero five four nine seven zero. But the thing is that that's the folder it goes in. That folder was different both times. So I deleted the folder. And then it created a different folder with a different ID for my new save. It was different. And I was like, why is it different? It's not even the same folder. How is this even possible? Mm. So either I didn't see it right, but I'm pretty sure the folder was different, but it doesn't matter. So anybody can do it. Anybody can delete their save files, figure all that stuff out, whatever. But, you know, obviously having a new game, I think that's a basic option. That yeah, should there, should have just, there should have just been a new save. Absolutely. Yeah, that, where yeah. where you, you hit new game and it's like, okay, this is going to replace your save. Are you cool with that? Okay, fine. Whatever. If that was a thing, that wouldn't have even bothered me at all. But, you know, it being one safe slot doesn't bother me. And I think that the reason why it's a safe slot, which is what, one of the things that a lot of people are asking, why is it one safe slot? I think the reason is they don't want you having a bunch of pawns on the server. Yeah, they want no, it because otherwise there's there's already people that are like my pawn never gets rented, which yeah. honestly you probably you probably don't have a good pawn. I'm gonna be honest, it's it's hard to hear, but like even in, even on my review save, I saw on my review save, which there were you know probably a hundred people reviewing the game, if that. I logged on the other day and I had a, like eleven thousand RC just come in, and then I rested and had another eleven thousand RC come in. Yeah, but you have and, an official pawn. That's not fair. No, 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 no review save. Not my oh, official pawn. Oh, and the review save, okay. The Brawling Horseman pawn. <laughs> so, okay, so this is a completely random random account. Okay, fine. Yeah, that 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 is different. I, th I thought it was in the, in your current official, because, like, the official pawns are overpowered. That's not... That's, and I don't mean overpowered yeah, they, as they, in they're more powerful than the other pawns. They have more exposure than the other pawns, so more people yeah, use absolutely. them. Yeah, absolutely. So, like, the, it's, the it's reason, not even close. I mean, you've, you've seen my pawn, right? Yeah, yeah, it's Rush. No, not Sarah. The other one, my, no, I haven't seen the pawn. other one. No. Oh, uh, here, let me, let me, let me save the image. I'll put it in chat. She's, she's gorgeous. I don't know why my my pawn has has all that RC. Look at them tiggle bitties. <laughs> oh, oh, oh. That's, that's why she got all that RC. Look at that. You make a sexy elf lady with some goth makeup on and tiggle bitties. Oh, that's that's the pawn. I want, I want that one. I want that one in the party. <laughs> Get all the RC. It's, it's it's actually funny that you say that because I think earlier today I saw I saw a, a Twitter post from somebody 
that was saying, see, this is why Rift Crystals are being sold because I want to get this pawn. And they showed, it was a random pawn from some random player, but it was like all sexied up and shit. <laughs> and so they thought it was like a premium pawn or something. And this was like, see, this is why they're selling the Rift Crystals. It's because of that. I can't rent this pawn. It's like, no, level up. <laughs> like, stop. Yeah. <laughs> like, yeah. dude, what the hell? It won't let me rent the sexy one. <laughs> I want the sexy pawn. <laughs> no, but yeah, it makes um, it, it, it makes sense. Yeah, you have to make your pawn appealing, or you have to have a shtick. Like my pawn's a dwarf. People like my pawn because yeah. he's, he's a dwarf. He's like hanging out. It's a cool dude. But um, yeah, I mean, the, the the big thing you gotta <clears throat> you have to you, 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 have, you have good good augments. You want to have yeah, good exactly. augments. You want to have good gear. If your gear is upgraded, that's even better. Yeah, I think your pawn either it needs to be sexy. Or it needs to be like a badass, you know. Like Sarash is like, yeah. Oh, look at this Giga Chad line. The dwarf is like, I'm ready to fucking take somebody's ankles out, <laughs> you know. If you're if you're if you got Frumpy McGee running around in the rift, fr I see Frumpy McGee. He's going in the brine. Like, <laughs> well, it's just I got no interest having you in my party. You're going in the brine. <laughs> I've seen I've seen a lot of really ugly characters. The, the worst just, are the ones where just, it's just named like main pawn. I'm like, ooh, I ain't hiring that. <laughs> you ain't getting hired at all. So, so wait a minute. What, what is main pawn? I've, I've heard a lot of people complain about this. Is that the default name for your pawn? People, people, I don't know if it's just the default name or when people were creating the name, they were confused about how to transfer it. So the one they wanted to transfer, they named main pawn. And then when it transferred into the game, it was named main pawn. <laughs> So now there's a bunch of main pawns running around. Because I think people were confused. They thought that you were making all four of your pawns in the character creator. They didn't realize it was like, yeah, make a couple pawns and then you can you can pull what you want into the game. You can pick one. Oh, okay. Which the character creator, I thought, I thought that was pretty clear. It was like, you will be able to transfer one into the game. Is this the one you want? Yeah. And you, you but you, you have to you have to like select it because like I know that Gaijin yeah. had issues with that as well because he created like all of the Baldur's Gate three characters or something and then he yeah. wanted to have a Sterion with him and it instead it pulled in somebody else and he was like this is not what I wanted because <laughs> that was probably the last one that he did or something and it set that one yeah. as default. And and at that point, it's like, well, that's, that's your pawn now. You ain't, you ain't going, unless you had a manual backup of your save, you ain't going back. <laughs> You're done. But your pawn is set, sir. But uh, the, the, the thing about that, yeah, is like if pe people, if you want to get your pawns rented by other players, you need to have a, a really good pawn. You need to have a pawn that has knowledge. You need to have a pawn that has good skills. You need to have a pawn that has all of these other things. And yeah, it's like augments, the, good gear, they give, aesthetics. To give people an idea, I'm actually going above and beyond for my pawn because one of the things that you might have not noticed, every time that you go to see my pawn, he is always a fighter. He has never not been a fighter. Despite the fact that he's a max level warrior, that he's a, only a level six fighter, and he's about to be a max level thief, you've never not seen him as a fighter on the list. <laughs> because every time before I rest, I go in there, I equip him on his fighter gear, I make sure that it's fully upgraded with... Oh, sorry about that. I make sure that it's fully upgraded with every like piece of gear that I can upgrade with the best weapons that I can get. Like He is decked out. So every night before I go to the inn, I go in there. Like, I don't even rest at camps. I can't. Because if I rest at a camp, he's going to become a thief. And that's unacceptable. <laughs> so. I just did it with Sarash. Yeah, Sarash, was even, he was even a mage for a very brief period to get the <laughs> magic, magic defense augment. But I grabbed that and immediately. It was like, okay, back to, back to warrior. You're set. Yeah. Now, now Sarash is running around freaking end game dragon forged gear. Yeah, I, I like, saw that. I was like, damn, all of his gear is Dragonforge. This is insane. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah Sarash, Sarash is now like, do you need a carry? I'm here. <laughs> he has Arc of Might on now. Like, oh, you want me to one-shot the dragon? Okay, boss. He, he, does, he doesn't one-shot dragons. I can confirm that. Well, he, he, I, I don't, just, I he just got Arc of Might at the end of the stream. Oh, just now? Okay. Because yeah, like, so, I, was, I, was I was fighting a dragon today, and the dragon got away. I was like, god damn it. Trying yeah, the early him. ones. He he needs. He's missing two passives, which come from Warrior, and he needs to upgrade uh, his yeah. Breaker and Revivify. And then I went. To, it, he's done. I went to get Warrior so that I could um, so that I could get the the augment that 
reduces the amount of health that you lose when when you you die or when you take damage and because mm-hmm. like my fighter is going to be tanky but the the tank he is the tank the one the one damage thing that i want to go get is verve to give him more strength that's pretty much it i'll have to i'll have to look to see if i have an extra ring if i do i'll send it to you but i have a ring that just outright increases your aggro generation yeah i saw, I saw that on sarash i was like oh i wonder yeah. where you get that one that one looks nice yeah. Uh, I, he's I he's set up to that. basically be a warrior tank. He's he's he has the aggro ring. He has yeah. That's that's what I've been using him as. He's yeah. been my main tank because I'm like I have Sarash as the tank, and then it was two thieves for a long time. Yeah. It was just Sarash, two thieves, and a mage. It was a full <laughs> melee party, and it's funny because when I went to thief, people were like, "Oh man, you're gonna miss your sorcerer when those harpies come around." I was like, "No." No, I'm not. This is better uh, than the sorcerer. Exists. What do you mean? <laughs> it's like and snare. <laughs> the harpies die so fast. They're worthless. Yeah. They do nothing. So yeah. yeah that... Once once his null breaker is is upgraded, you'll be able to fight dragons and he'll just stagger them into oblivion. They won't move. Yeah. Because that, uh... that move a fully a fully charged. It's honestly kind of wild. If on warrior, a fully charged well not not null breaker, but whatever the upgrade of it is, a fully charged version of that will stagger it'll do the initial stagger like a hundred percent of the time i, I so noticed that just, warrior staggering ooh. is is insane on my on my review save file because yeah. I, I i had just swapped to warrior the first time that the griffin came up i had just swapped to warrior and i was like rank one warrior and i'm fighting the mm. griffin with the default sword you know nobody's overpowered all the pawns are my level they're not even player pawns they're npc pawns because i was playing offline i was like no i don't i don't even want npc pawns i want to get uh, i don't want player pawns i want to see what the experience is like with default basic ass pawns and so i go to the griffin and it was literally every time i would climb onto his head triangle warrior jumps off slams knockdown every single yeah. time on the full powered griffin i was like how's this even possible dude warrior yeah, warrior busted. warriors <laughs> king of knockdowns <laughs> he is insane yeah yeah it's a lot of fun to play too because those you dude, get those knockdowns and then you follow up with like an arc of might and you chunk like three or four health bars that's that's the thing that i think that a lot of people might not understand is that dragon's dogma is at least for your first playthrough is going to be one of the best class fantasies of any RPG. Like, oh, yeah. you want to play warrior? You're literally guts minus cannon arm and uh, and the the repeating crossbow. Your guts. Like the first yeah. time that I I think it was a Saurian. First time I was fighting a Saurian, and you do a critical attack with the sword, and the the sword just like chunk. And then the monster is stuck on the sword. And I was like, wait, what? Then he lifts him up in the air. I was like, what the hell is... And then he just yeets him into a mountain. I was like, what was that? Warrior feels really good. Warrior feels so good. And I, again, I usually, I don't care for like big great swords, big shot. But like, dude, Warrior just felt so good. The critical hits of Warrior. And even the skills of Warrior. Like you have that skill where he just like pulls the sword back for a little bit. It was like boom, big shockwave. It's beautiful. Yeah. The the ultimate is like it's like TCS. I discovered so it does. It's you have charge. like a, yeah, you have well, you you charge it forever, but then he does a wind up swing and then a big swing. And if you only hit the big swing, you do some damage. But if the wind up connects and then it the big swing connects, yeah, it 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 increase doesn't even describe it. We're talking like. <laughs> We're talking like one health bar to like four health bars. It is huge. Jesus Christ. Yeah. Wh- I like, I think my, my favorite thing about Warrior though is just the variability in the attacks. You can do charge attacks. You can do well time presses for fast yep. attacks. You can work the shoulder checks in. Like, I, people were like, I wish this was Warrior and Dragon's Dogma 1. And I'm like, no. No. The core kit feels so freaking good on Warrior. Oh, hell no. I would, I Wait, would so absolutely people, take the core kit. So, so people want the warrior from dragon's dogma one well pe- people were saying one? they they miss that you used to have more abilities no because in in dragon's dogma one that was one of the problems of warrior you only had three abilities then you have a second page for no abilities not for war at least as far as i remember no warrior was the one class that got screwed over mm, everybody I mean, else we're, had we're like six years. abilities warrior warrior had only had three he was the only one which was weird because even because i remember i initially thought in the original dragon's dogma that like 
uh, because other classes had like different weapons. So the mm. mystic, the the mystic knight, you could have your staff or your one handed weapon, or no, it was like staff, one handed weapon, and then shield. And you could have two of those, if I remember correctly. If you had the shield, you had the shield abilities plus the weapon abilities, or you had the weapon abilities plus the staff abilities, so on and so forth, right? Uh, and fighter was the same thing shield abilities weapon abilities strider knife abilities bow abilities the mages and the sorcerers were the only ones that like no we just have more even though we only have this one yeah. staff but the warrior was like no you have a two-handed weapon but you only have three abilities i, yeah. I distinctly I, mean, I, I haven't i haven't i just looked it up the last time i played was uh was like 2020 so four years ago yeah the original it was it was wild, but 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 like yeah, the, I I wouldn't want the original warrior. Sorry, the the new warrior is so much cooler. Like forget about that. And I remember playing it. I played it for for a while. I was I, I never really got too into warrior. I didn't didn't like it all that much. But the current one, it just feels so freaking good. But yeah, it's just, it's just wait wait till you play Mystic Spearhand. You're basically a Jedi. Yeah, I know. I I played Mystic Spearhand in the preview. That's why I know that I want it. <laughs> okay. So it's like I already know what I'm getting into. I'm like, no, this this yeah, is Mystic, what I want. The, the only two classes I haven't now given I haven't played mage or sorcerer, but the only two classes I haven't vibed with have been fighter and trickster. Dude, I fighter love fighter just because. Well, I think the thing is like fighter, you're a parry god, but <clears throat> once you get down to it, like you don't have you know if you're trying to get a knockdown, warrior is going to be better at getting a knockdown. If you're yes. trying to do damage, warrior and thief is going to be better at doing damage, and it just it feels that like you know I can't force the dragon to to aggro me in like have parry's used, face have you used dust toss yeah the yeah just the ability? hold the button the whole button yeah yeah, yeah. I, I don't know i feel like that one has pretty good knockdown potential obviously it's not gonna be the same as warrior but you have yeah. other things at, at your disposal I, I don't know i haven't played too much of fighter because like the what i did with fighter was i played both my main and the pawn as fighters mm -hmm. until rank six to get through and it's yep, like, okay, now we can play other things. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> goodbye, goodbye, fighter. You're done. Yeah. <laughs> no, I mean, my pawn is going to end as a fighter, but it's like, because by the end he's going to be a fighter, it doesn't matter what I play until then, because that's going to get maxed out regardless. I, I, I actually, I did a little bit of fighter at max level, just because, or not max level, but, you know, when I was like level, level yeah. 60 or so, just to see like, all right, now that I have, you know, end game type weapons, end game sword, end game shield, you know, what kind of damage am I doing? And it's still just it it didn't feel that good. Now I didn't have the the warrior ultimate at that point. So I'd have to to test out that skill and see if like mm -hmm. maybe that that pushes you into a new level where it's like that ultimate is gonna blow through two health bars or something. But it just felt like the I, damage was too far behind other classes. I, I doubt that the ultimate's gonna push you that far. But I don't think the fighter is designed to deal damage. I just think that the fighter no, is gonna not. end up being a better tank than the warrior. Because in situations where the warrior might get killed, the fighter might survive, which is kind of like where mm. I feel the the fighter is. You, you do have that get out of jail free shield spinny thing, so maybe. Yeah, you have. I'm, I'm I'm not using that though. Like my my fighter has the ultimate ability. He's got the springboard because I just feel like springboard has so many uses. Like you see a chest, you know, yeah, somebody. No, you have to, you have to have somebody in your party that can springboard. That can springboard. I, I think that's essential. Uh, so you have the springboard. You have the the ultimate ability, shield summons, and right now I'm using the shield bash because shield bash is good CC on small targets as well. Like yeah, you I ended up the once once you get the mm -hmm. ring, you can drop the uh, the shield summons. I think the aggro I, ring. I had, I had yeah, I had Bella on until I got between the aggro ring and the aggro perk. I think that covers your your aggro enough. Because the thing is, you get to a point where, like, the biggest thing Shield Summons is going to do for you is rounding up a bunch of little stuff. But, yeah. you know, when you're, like, level 30... Doesn't matter. Yeah, nobody's getting overwhelmed by goblins at that point. Yeah, yeah. So the, the bigger thing is aggro on single target. And between the ring and your aggro perk, like, if the dragon's going to pick a target, it's going to focus on you. So one of, the, one of the really cool things that I've noticed about the pawn system that's been a really cool experience for me... And this is more of a content creator type thing. I don't know how many people will relate to, to this. It was just the fact that you know how a lot of times you want to be able to play with your audience, but it's like you're one and there's like hundreds of people that want to play with you. And it's like, look, I can't play with everyone. It's it's not yeah. it's not going to happen on, on, their, on any game. Their pawns you in. keep rotating, you know. And no, the thing is, they get to play with my pawn, but the way that I made the pawn, so you made Sirash, right? So you have your character and then you have Sirash. I was like, no. 
I'm going to make myself as the pawn. So my pawn is called Rurikan. He is me in every aspect, which is why I've made him super tanky, because usually in MMOs, I play tank every time. I have, good, I have a good story about this in a little bit. Yeah. So like, I was like, no, this this is me. So basically, people are using the pawn. It's like they're playing with me. It's kind of yeah. like, I think it's a really cool system. It's been really fun. Like... Sure, I get thousands of rift crystals. I actually don't give a fuck about that. I just think it's really cool the notion of people almost as if they were playing with me. I mean, honestly, rift crystals become kind of useless at a point. Like yeah. in in a uh, Bach Batal, you can buy dyes with them, and I think you can change like armor colors. I haven't messed with it yet. Okay. But besides that, it's like the the spectacles you could put on your character. Like, look, yeah, Sarah has never, glasses now. You know, like I've never I've never used any I've never used any of that yeah. stuff, and I haven't bought anything. <laughs> That, that was the other thing. One of the microtransactions was the the ambivalent rift incense, which I didn't even know what it did because it, in game it gives it you it gives you an I, RNG I, I know, inclination. I, I know what I know what it does now. What I mean is, I didn't even know what it did because in the game it doesn't say. It just says changes your pawn, and I was like, but it's cheaper than the other ones. Well, why? And then when the yeah, microtransaction yeah. stuff happened, I go and I see. Wait, so this changes you to a brand? This is even worse. This is terrible. Why would you buy this? This is atrocious. You should never buy this item. This item is bad. You, you don't want to use this unless you're doing like a challenge run or some type of random nonsense because you should actually have a proper inclination for your pawn. Otherwise, your pawn's not going to work properly. Yeah. But I, I just thought that the, the pawn system was a ton of fun to, to play around with. Oh, but so when at the last time I had your pawn... Oh no. <laughs> we were we were leaving the inn and I just leap out the window onto a stall. Pawn leaps out the window, pawn leaps out a window, and your guy with his stubby legs is just going <laughs> and everyone's like, I thought it was supposed to be Ruri Khan, not Ruri Can't. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm just standing there looking at his little stubby legs hitting the balcony and I'm like, trying his best, chat. <laughs> Trying his best, right? <laughs> his, 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 his legs aren't doing him any any favors right now. <laughs> the funny thing is, for some strange reason, my pawn always takes longer to get to places than all the other ones. Yeah, he's got them them legs, man. It's happened so many times. Like I'm, I'm walking over to the vocation thing because I'm changing his vocation so that I can go rest at the inn. And I get there and he's not there. So I activate <laughs> the NPC and it's just like me and then blank. And I was like, yeah. And then I look and he's like almost a mile away. I'm like, what are you doing? <laughs> One time he was taking so long. I ran up to him. I grabbed him. And threw him into the freaking vocation guild and stay there i'm gonna change your vocation don't move <laughs> uh, i'll need to I'll, i will need to pull him out i'm getting to a point where i have like so much so much just gear i'm not gonna use that my uh my new goal is i'm just gonna start pulling out new pawns constantly and then just donating them dope gear yeah that i'm never gonna have that's that's one of the things that i've been doing because i don't like um breaking the progression of the game and people have sent me crazy stuff by the way i still haven't received your mace i thought i had i didn't because i finally picked up the mace that you supposedly send me the spiky one that deals bonus the damage black spiky one. yeah <laughs> i picked it up and i was like wait i never received this so it's yeah. still somewhere <laughs> still hasn't got still Dude, in the I backlog I sent Sirash the, the Dragonforged gear on like day one, and I just got those today. Yeah, the, the, I think it's because a lot of people are using our pawns, which is really cool, but it does create yeah. a bit of a backlog. And then I, I have another problem, which is because, you know, we got to start one day early, right? So I'm lagging, uh, I'm, I'm avoiding resting at the end as much as possible, which is why a lot of times I'll be playing the game, people are like, why are you at 20% health? And it's like, yeah. because I don't want my pawn to level up in the servers because that's going to keep more people from being able to use him because we had an earlier start than we had one day early start. And so people yeah, which can't pick up we, the we should. I feel like we should be able to like lock it at a certain level or something. Yeah. Because like eventually, you know, eventually my pawn is going to be like level 60 or 70, same as me. Yeah. And it's not going to be able to help people that are new to the game or, or create like, I don't know, Sometimes a one-time discount. 
or or a, one, one, a scale a scaling system would probably be cool for, well, for the I, official I think, pawn specifically well but my thing is if 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 the oh well, scaling like scale their levels down yeah that would make sense because yeah, exactly. i was going to say if you make them if you make them cheaper in rc that's not fair to other players like yeah exactly you it, like, yeah, you don't, you don't like you that. get you know hey your first time starting you can hire you can hire one official pawn for free yeah the very first cool. You that get one, cool. and then after that, like if you know, you hire level seventy Sirach and he falls in water. Well, tough shit. You know, <laughs> hope you've been farming your RC. Yeah, because it, it, I, I always feel bad when when people are like, oh man, I'm trying to to get your pawn, and I was like, I know, I'm trying to level him up as slowly as possible. Yeah. Well, like, today people were like, well, you should get Rory's pawn, and I look at it and I'm like, fucking ten levels behind me, and I'm like, what is it? Yeah, exactly. What do I do? What do I do with him? I'm like, he's just gonna he's a liability. <laughs> exactly. But that that's the thing. I'm purposefully keeping him as low as possible so that more people get to use him because a lot of people are like, oh I wanna I wanna play with your pawn. And I was like, fuck. Well, so is he a, is he a lower do. level than, than you? No, he's the same level as me. What I mean by keeping him lower level is I I don't rest at ends because that's when it when he updates is when you rest at camps and when you rest at ends yeah. that's when it gets updated to the servers which is why people keep seeing me run around with twenty percent health because I'm like I'm because, using uh, all any, of my health because every time I go to the inn it's like he's running away from everybody that's trying to get to him. I mean, if you got to go kill a bunch of big shit, you could just toss them in the brine and then be like, "Sorry, buddy, no experience for you for the next <laughs> Jesus hour." Jesus Christ, no! You gotta have to. You're gonna have to stay no. in the depths for for an no, hour or I, two while, while Papa that, kills this dragon. At, at, at that point, it's also like, well, I, I still want to have fun with the game. Fuck that! I want to play with my pawn. It's cool. <laughs> no. So you know that that's the situation. But I straight up, I'm I'm a little self masturbatory because I have Sirash and then I also have the pawn for my individual playthrough. <laughs> so, but I mean, I have not met a better mage than my own mage. I'm like, why would I use anyone but Liliana? She is perfect. <laughs> she is flawless in all ways. She is the best. There's no reason. <laughs> Playing with your own pawns. All right. So um, I, I wanted to ask you something. You, you put up a video today and you sent me a, a link. So apparently the stat growths are different than what we thought. There, so this is the interesting thing about it. The stat growths, they, they do exist. But when you take into account, you know how like when you look at a weapon, you see like, oh, you know, your base strength is at 300. With this weapon, it goes to like 600, though. I haven't I haven't paid too much attention to those stats. No, I usually just look at the number on the weapon to to guide myself. Is this a better weapon? Yeah, than well, what but I that's have yeah. Not? Well, that's what I mean. So that I'm and given that there's there's more math that would go into this when we consider like enemy resistances and whatnot. Mm -hmm. But that is more your your true damage stat. You know, my warrior hits for five hundred with this base versus five fifty with this sword. I want to use this sword. But if you look, you know, there's there's two numbers, and if you look next to it. There's like your raw stat and then what your stat is using that weapon mm -hmm. on the stat screen. There's a different number in parentheses. And so looking, I used Liliana and my Arisen. Liliana was thief for subtlety and then just pure mage and pure sorcerer for, you know, like 65 levels. Um, my Arisen, on the other hand, went fighter into spear hand into warrior into a pinch of trickster into uh magic archer into warfare and so he's been all over the place and what i did is i made both of them a thief no stat boost to thief so no verve or, or strength rings or anything like that and i looked at you know what does my character hit using these daggers what does liliana hit using these daggers and the raw stat screen if i'm just looking at the strength stat my warrior stat was roughly 40 percent higher than liliana's which is significant or my my arisen's once the the actual the damage i was doing on the daggers was taken into account though the stat difference was only 13 percent, which is significantly lower so then i did the reverse i took liliana who was a pure mage i put her back to mage i took my character who hadn't done any major sorcerer but a couple uh you know magic archer and, and mystic obviously a little bit of magic there and it was almost identical liliana had 38 percent more raw magic but when I looked at the damage of her using her stave, it was a 13% difference between my Risen using the stave. So there is some stat growth difference, but I mean, at 13%, that's so minor, I'm not going to worry about it. 
And then some some people in the comments were saying that apparently at level 200, I guess, the stats just kind of peak out. And yeah, so it was the, it was the same anyway. way. It was the same way as uh, in the original Dragon's Dogma, I think. But <clears throat> so But the stats still change whenever you change professions they they do they do change when you change professions see that's what threw you me know. off because that's that's how i tested it in the preview build the preview build i was like okay so when i'm a i think it was a trickster no was it a trickster i don't know <clears throat> i was one vocation that had no it was the magic archer i was the magic archer and i was like okay baseline this has 96 strength and then i swapped yeah. to warrior baseline this has 196 strength yeah so i mean looking at it as as a like right now my my level 69 arisen as a mage i have 280 strength and 265 magic as a thief i have 300 strength and 235 magic so your stats do change with your vocation leveling is involved but when everything is taken into account your augments the gear you're going to have on and especially your weapon you end up having a, a pretty minor difference. So like somebody that basically somebody that decides I'm going to level mage and then sorcerer and then warrior and then fighter and then this and then that and levels everything versus somebody that goes, I'm going to level sorcerer for 70 levels and I'm not going to look back. That pure sorcerer is going to be maybe 15% stronger. Which I is, I mean, I still in my opinion, I, the case. I would Yeah, I, I, yeah, I, I, I mean, that's, that's minor enough. I don't, I'm not stressing about it, obviously. I'm yeah, using it's everything just, I can. It's just I thought, because I saw the stats change in the preview build, I thought that, like, oh, the, the thing changes, so therefore the stats are not set yeah. in stone like in the previous one, so you can do whatever you want. Turns out you can do whatever you want, but you are going to miss out a little bit which you know there's still going to be people that are going to obsess over that and going to be super ocd about it well i think the thing and you're, you're only going to miss out on something that you're not you're not focusing you know like my character has done a bit of everything so and i, I tend to gravitate more towards melee classes so if i'm playing thief warrior fighter mystic spear hand i'm still going to be looking good if suddenly at level 70 i was like okay now i want to be a pure sorcerer, which even then, I mean, at level 70, if I started switching to sorcerer, I'd probably end up gaining enough stats, leveling up to 200 to close the gap. But at level 70, at least, you know, a pure swapping to sorcerer that late in the game, a pure sorcerer would be stronger than me. But obviously I have augments from other classes to help offset that. So. Yeah, I guess, the, I guess in a way, in a way that actually makes sense, because you end up having augments from other classes and you're always going to level up as the other classes if you're going to level up their vocations because you can't lock your exp yeah yeah so i can you know even though liliana is a better mage i could be a mage that's going to have warrior knockdown and the extra magic boost at night and all sorts of goodies so as with uh every cons cast there's a, a link to cowboy's channel if you want to check that out because he will have a video there talking about the the stat growths and all of that stuff so You'll be able to check out the specifics of that, but things are a little bit different than what I saw in the preview. So just to make sure that everybody's aware of that, which is why I wanted to bring up stat growths. Um, <clears throat> so dragon forging, I don't want to get into too much detail about it in case it involves spoilers and stuff. Because in the previous it one, it doesn't. Yeah, and in, in the previous it's, one, it's, dragon forging was killing dragons, and eventually your gear would become dragon forged. How does it work now? Um, consumable based basically as we kill okay. dragons you, you, have you killed a dragon at all uh yes you actually the, it's, the it's funny you want to know how i kill a dragon i shot him with a ballista bolt twice and he died i did that today too yeah <laughs> the, the, the one the one at the the ancient battleground one <laughs> he shot him with a ballista yeah. twice he's dead Which, oh speaking speaking of killing a dragon this i almost forgot about this so when i went to uh to melv for the dragon attack i was like you know what i wonder if i can ballista this fucker so I climb up the ballista that you're shot, the griffin at the start of the game is shot down with. Oh no. I, I kill the dragon as it's trying to fly away from Melv. The body <laughs> lands in the middle of town and I got dead ringer off of it, which is the second best mystic spear hand weapon in the game. Damn. Yeah. That's pretty beast. Because late, late, so late game, as you kill dragons, you'll get like hyper rare loot. Like, like, like there's, there's a set number of like the corrupted dragons from what I understand. Mm -hmm. And each one has 
a different like primary weapon or a different primary armor like you know the best the best for the best armor for ranger or the second best weapon for your uh your class or whatever and so i haven't i haven't gone to mystic spearhand yet but when i do my dude is jacked because the only weapon i've found that's stronger than that weapon is the dragon forged weapons damn so um and to talk about that so as you as you kill dragons now you get the the worm's life crystals yeah uh, i have a bunch of those already yeah that now becomes a currency for the dragon forged himself for the npc and you okay. can i don't believe the gear unlock i know there's some gear you can get early but i don't think like the really good shit like the shit i have on sarash i don't think that unlocks until you're in the post game but it's it's everything's done through those crystals so those crystals are used to get the final upgrade tier they're used to purchase the armor you might want the weapon you might want um there's a couple other like cool things he can do with the crystals but basically you kill dragons and you now receive currency to engage in dragon forging activities okay which it, it takes away a little bit of the excitement of like yeah, i murdered this was... and now my weapon is buffed but it's infinitely more user friendly now yeah yeah because now, now you're not like because well, the other I gotta one become like... a mage for five minutes to get my fucking pawns weapon leveled up you know <laughs> But it was it was an interesting way of doing it. But um, so while we're on the topic of upgrades, there, there's another one that I'm curious about because so far I've only been able to do Vermundian upgrades, but the game tells mm -hmm. you that there's more. So number one, can I, let's say for instance, I already upgraded a weapon with Vermundian. Can I change that? To what do you mean Vermundian upgrades? So the upgrades are different depending on where you upgrade. I don't think so. That's what the game says, unless the game is lying. The game says, so Vermundian upgrades give you, like, uh, overall stat increases, but then they say there might be other upgrades that increase your magic and other upgrades that increase your strength more and stuff like that. Where and do if, you... Is this in the tutorial? Yeah, it's in the tutorial section. At, at least me, at I'm the gonna very hop, beginning. I'm going to hop on my New Game Plus character and I'll look. I mean, I've always just yeah, because upgraded, like, upgraded shit and then Dragon Forged it and called it a day. People have sent me stuff, right? Because people keep sending me stuff. And what I've been doing with it is because I don't want to break progression. Oh, no, I know. I know what you're talking about. I know okay. what you're talking about. I've never, honestly, I've never paid attention to it. Um, but yeah, you get a an icon on your weapon depending yeah. on where you upgrade it. You get a little, so if you upgrade it with the elves, you get a, a certain icon. Um, I can, I mean, I'd assume my main save probably will will break that all down. Assuming it shows everything on it, I'll check. No, no. What? I, but what I meant to what I meant to say is because I know that this stuff is in the game, what, and and everybody will know that the literal moment that you visit one blacksmith, he'll tell you like, oh, uh, you know, this is how the upgrade system works now. If you upgrade here, here's what you get, and then if you upgrade in other places, you get something different. What I was wondering is, can you reset the upgrades on a weapon, or do you need to find the weapon? Yes. Again? No, you can. You can completely reset them on a weapon. Okay. Because that that was one of the things that I was concerned with because I was like, oh, what if I find something really good and I put Vermundian on it, but then I would actually want to get a different upgrade somewhere else. I'm kind of screwed. So I know the, the, the Dragon Forge man has a thing to reset. I don't I would assume that fully resets the weapon. Okay. Um I'm I'm checking right now. Item and equipment. Or would it be under warfare? Shops and facilities, equipment enhancement. Yeah, that would be styles it. of smithing. There are several styles of smithing used in enhancement, different exactly. results such as such as moderate all around improvement or increase in magic or might. Choose the style that is best for you. Okay. So I'm assuming so, Batal is might, elves is magic, and Vermundian is all around, most likely. Probably. Yeah. Yeah, that's that's probably what it's what it's gonna be. Yeah, that sounds that's sounds I would need to have right. two two separate upgrades and uh to test it but yeah that el yeah elves elves are likely magic but tall is likely physical yeah yeah which means i got some some work i got to do on sarash got to ah see yeah, I, I actually i actually taught you yeah. something holy shit <laughs> i always wondered i was like what are these fucking icons what for? are these I'm icons so, yeah no I've, I've seen like i've seen stuff that people sent me that had like a, the different icon i was like oh this has probably been upgraded in batal because it would make sense but like the the thing is, the thing that I've been doing is because I don't want to break progression on my character, people send me stuff and then I just set a quest on my dwarf and I'll be like, okay, you do this quest, here's this weapon. So like just today I had, so, somebody sent me the, a great sword called Life Taker and I was like, all right, you guys That's go cool kill, yeah. you guys go kill a, a Minotaur, you get a Life Taker. 
There you but go. See now, now this is this is my confusion with with those quests because you only have. I think you can only do them once, which is yes. Yeah, so like if I if I upload that and like fifty people go after a minotaur, how does the we, game treat that? Yeah, exactly. I, I I don't know if he dupes it or not, but I've noticed that once one person completes it, it appears to you know that's it. That quest is done. Somebody Those defaults, else needs to do it. Yeah, but it was weird because at one point. Uh, a lot of people were able to complete one quest where I had put like uh because you know how there's that there's a really rare resource called the black crystal. Like I've really been putting stuff that is valuable for people to do quests from a oh, black board. crystal. Yeah, those are uh, lich drops. Yeah, exactly. So that thing is valuable, and but the thing was, I know that I picked one up organically, and that somebody else had sent me one at some point. So I was like, okay, I'm gonna give the one that somebody sent me. I'm gonna give that away, and I think that that one people got it. So it's almost like my pawn is mm. duping items. I don't yeah. know how that works. It's yeah, I've weird. seen some people. I've had, I had someone sent me a fucking poor crystal. I'm like, <laughs> that's weird. What, are you, what somebody, are you doing? Somebody sent a port crystal to Super Rad as well. Super Rad was like, yeah, someone, who the hell sent me a port crystal? Someone sent me their uh, their dragon's gaze, the thing that marks all the wakestone shards thought, on the map. I thought about sending that one because I haven't used it. I was like, it's, I, don't I mean, need it's this. it's just super useful. I'm like, why would you give this away? Yeah, I, I know this. it's useful, but it's like I already have 15 wake stones and I haven't even been trying. Yeah. So I'm like, that's, I don't even use them. Like, usually I just die. Okay, I died. Too bad. Reload. Because at I, least I will have you, you can use them to fast travel. <laughs> <laughs> I've done that a couple of times. Wait, how do you, I want to get down there? I want to get down at the end of that cliff. Okay. <laughs> what? Ah, I'm alive again. Great. <laughs> Time to continue on the journey. <laughs> it works quite well. Oh, it's funny. I, I, so I'm, I, I'm, I I'm checking now, like so I can, I can reset enhancement. I'm gonna, I'm gonna do this on Liliana and then re-upgrade her weapon, and I'll tell you what happens. Let's see. Remove, give cowboy. So now I gotta go. I gotta upgrade it at the Elvish Village, you know. Yeah, yeah, of course. I mean, gotta, gotta reset. give, gotta give her the best. Reset gotta give cost. Her the best possible stuff. Yes, so it completely it has a very very cheap cost, and it will completely, uh, it'll completely reset your stuff. Yeah, so that that's important so that people know. Even if you find something really good, and you want to upgrade it right now, you can reset that stuff later, which is one of the things yeah. that I wasn't aware and I was concerned about. Um, but yeah, so far it's like I've been having a blast. This is exactly the game that I wanted it to be. Uh, minus the frame rate problems, obviously. Take the frame yeah. rate problems away; those are those are an issue. But once once those get sorted, which hopefully they'll be able to figure that stuff out, like this is exactly what I wanted the game to be. I know that a lot of people keep harping on the whole fast travel thing. I didn't want fast travel. As a matter of fact, I find it more fun to explore a game like this that doesn't have fifty different markers. Well, I think part of it is if you're if you're taking away fast travel. Actually, what I want, what would I want on a mage? Would it make more sense to have physical defense on the mage? Because like nothing's really hitting me with magic. I don't know. I don't know. I haven't min maxed to that extent. Mm, I think her. We're just gonna keep her gear because her gear is a focus on physical defense, which you you probably want that as a mage. I don't want stuff coming up and smacking me. I mean, if Sarash is doing a good smacked. job, that shouldn't be happening. Well, it's not, it's, it's not, a, it's always, it's always like the stray wolf, you know, it's just a stray wolf that runs up and knocks you down and grabs you and then and it drags you, you away from the pack. Like it was, magic, I'm not worried about. I'm stuff getting knocked down before it has a chance to do anything. It was funny. I saw that happen to, to Dan's gaming. Too. I saw that clip. Yeah. He just got <laughs> his, his tweet, his tweet just said, Hey guys, can you please give your pawns offensive things so that they can help? people yeah. when they get dragged away that pawn was just sitting in there heal cure debuff I watched that. I here's like, the light and i was like I was bro like, it's daytime this. you don't need the light oh, you're, you're getting yeah he got he got just, mauled just bullied yeah i was like there's there's no well and that's the thing i've had a lot of people ask you know because they're they're coming at this from the same mindset as like uh you know souls and they're like well can i can i play this game solo and i'm like you can. Yeah, you can. Uh, yeah, I, got, yeah, I have a very good time. And I'm like, well, I play, I play, I play Soul Solo. I think I'll be fine here. I'm like, oh, okay. 
See that that's that's one of that's another one of the things because I've 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 heard a lot of people say that like, oh man, this game sucks. There's no dodge roll. If you're a mage and you get caught by something, they're gonna they hit did. you and they're gonna hurt you and you're gonna die and there's nothing you can do. And I'm just yeah. thinking to myself, yeah, you know, in role playing games, that's the that's, problem that's, that's with that's mages. What that's that's, the, what happens. that's what's supposed to happen. Like if you're playing Dungeons and Dragons and a big minotaur comes up to you, he's gonna have his way with you. That's what happens. Yeah. The the thing you is, you are now gonna be the minotaur's toy. It's the the thing is, snack. we've got we've gotten so used to always every action game now has a dodge roll or some get out of jail free card, and I'm not saying that's a bad thing. Different games, different things, but what Dragon's Dogma is trying to do is give you back that class fantasy. Where it's like if you are a mage, your most important skill is positioning, and I find it yeah. hilarious that people are like if you're a mage, there's nothing you can do, and I'm like, no, there is something you can do. Get out of the way. I played as a sorcerer. I maxed my sorcerer vocation and I fought a lot of things there and I got aggro a lot of times because, yeah. you know, the, at, at those levels with the damage I'm doing as a sorcerer, I will grab aggro every time. There's no shot. There's no fighter, no warrior. I even had a fighter and the warrior and I would still steal the aggro off of both of them. At one point I had my pawn as a fighter, Sarash as a warrior and me as a sorcerer, I would still grab aggro. So, and the, what you do in those situations is like, you look at the monster, what's the monster doing? Is the monster attacking? Maybe let's not cast a spell right now. What you can't expect to do is like, no, I'm casting my spells and now I'm going to hit the dodge roll and I frame is like, no, this is not that game. It's the same thing as the fast travel stuff. This is not that game. This game is yeah. about you understanding what your role is and having a party that can support that role. So it's like, if you want, you can have four sorcerers and you're going to deal a crap ton of damage. You're going to do sync casting and all these crazy things. But if a big monster gets in the middle of your little party of four sorcerers, you're not going to do trouble. anything. You're going to die. <laughs> it's that simple. Every character has like their own way of dealing with things. So like the, the archer can kick and he dodges backwards or whatever. The rogue can dodge. The mages, they can levitate and pray that, that the stuff can't get to them. But, you know, everybody has a way of dealing with things. It's just a matter of how you do it. Like, look, I got so, drop kicked in the face by an ogre multiple times as my sork. It happens. I just <laughs> I just tested it just so for the, the sake of... Uh more uh, concrete information hang on there's a fucking goblin running around in the town go away so i can show rory this <laughs> you're, you're testing uh, so, out the, the difference in stats yeah so like with a max tier staff my my second tier upgrade on it would have brought me to 822 magic going to the elves uh, if i go to vermund it would go up to 814 magic so it's not that now, much well, but that's only going up to the second tier upgrade. Yeah, there's right. also more, yeah, the more, there's more materials required. Uh, there's more materials required to get it upgraded properly. Yeah. So, so it's like, it's specialization stuff. So it will be different if you really want to min max to that extent, but it doesn't mm -hmm. seem like it's going to be too massive. Like, I know that most likely for my Mystic Spearhand, I'm going to want Vermund because I want both the strength and the magic because he deals both damages. So I think that's that's gonna be how I'm gonna handle that. But yeah. Yeah, I'm I'll have to I'll have to figure that out. It's definitely a level of, of min maxing I hadn't considered, especially because uh you know, I mean there's not that many people that can even use a level sixty nine pawn at this point. So it's like Yeah, exactly. There's not there's not really a whole point to going at it that hard. But yeah, like like I said, I'm I'm still delaying my pawn. Now, one of the things that I'm curious that I don't know as much about, and you will, and without spoilers, how's the story? I like the story. I think the the first act is definitely much heavier, like Game of Thrones political intrigue. And then the second act tends to, it ramps up fairly quickly. But at the same time, I think in my first playthrough, so there, there's a lot I still want to experience because in my first playthrough, I did, you know, I crossed the border illegally and I kind of like put events into motion that I probably shouldn't have put into motion. So I think there's a lot of stuff in Act 2 that I didn't get to experience. And then when I beat the game and I got through and I was in New Game Plus, I realized I was missing mats 
that I was like, well, I got to rush it. So like that was a big thing in the review. People were like, oh, well, you're you're new game plus plus and you've already played for for, you know, 70 hours. This seems like a small game. And it's not that it's a small game. It's that my first playthrough was about 50 hours. And then when I started new game plus, I realized, shit, I can't get these mats right now. So I hauled ass straight to the end to do post game activities in my new game plus playthrough, upgraded all my shit, got it to where I wanted it to be. And then was like, okay, now it's time to do the stuff that I didn't do in New Game Plus, and I skipped to New Game Plus Plus. So I started New Game Plus Plus when I was at like 75, 80 hours in, because my New Game Plus was like, just yeah. like farming mats. That that was one of the things that I've seen from people as well, because there were people saying like, uh, so, someone had played through the game in 20 hours and they did 90% of side content, and I was like, no. No, no, they didn't. No, they did no. not. No, I'm 40, I'm 40 hours in and there's so much side content that I haven't done and there's side content that I've messed up because I'm playing organically. I'm not like looking up solutions and stuff like that. I'm just, you know, mm -hmm. what happens happens. So like I told you, the, the quest of the, the evil doctor or whatever, that went very badly for me. Uh, the quest of the beggar, that one I'm not sure that I got the best possible outcome as well because there's multiple outcomes for multiple quests and things can be very yeah. very different um but the thing that i've been enjoying is just it feels very organic because you're not like world of warcraft oh here's a here's a quest and here's where you turn it in go kill 10 boars there's nothing like that it, it's just like oh so just just even earlier today somebody came up to me and they were like Oh, I need you to I need you to come with me to, to this place and I go with them and she's like, I need you to go find uh, this child that looks like this other child for for this thing, which is a quest that you were doing yesterday on your stream. I, I know so, what quest you're talking about, the twins yeah. quest. It's a very yeah, yeah. it's a very fucked up quest, if we're being honest. It is. It is it pretty is, messed and, up. And it has it has a very unsatisfying end as well. I don't know if there's like more that can happen there might but, there might be more to it that's the yeah. thing because a lot of the stuff that happens that there always seems like there's more like for instance the quest that you were talking about where you go save the night right yeah. that night in my review save died yeah. he was escorting me to town and he died because <laughs> we were fighting the cycle like at the very beginning of the game he died because we were fighting the cyclops and I was just like, oh, I remember seeing this in the trailer. I can throw this explosive barrel over here and the water comes barreling through and the water murdered everybody. <laughs> Cyclops, knights, the water does not discriminate. <laughs> I was like, oh. No, it does not. Every, everybody dies to the so water. If I, had, if I had continued that save file, I would have never even seen that quest. That thing was done because I never bothered resurrecting him. You can resurrect people, but yeah. It's it's interesting. And people were saying as they were watching my stream today as I was doing that quest, they're like, wait, that guy died at the start for me. And I was like, well, that's too bad. <laughs> consequences. Yeah, it's it the sounds, consequences. Sounds like you, it sounds like you fucked up. <sighs> people it's, people don't don't I think that's a, that's another thing with this game. Um Dragon's Dogma is you know, you live you live with your mistakes. Yeah. They want you to live with your mistakes. And a lot of people, they, they don't, don't like that. the idea. They, yeah, they don't want to live with their mistakes. They're like, no, I, I, you know. I remember no. this. I remember this when I was playing um, Baldur's Gate 3. And I, and I made a video about saves coming. And I was like, mm -hmm. look, I think it's your single player game. You should do whatever you want. But I, would, I think it would be interesting for people to at least once try to play the game without saves coming. Because the results are really funny. There's a lot of really funny things that can happen where, as you start failing spell checks and as things start de going off the rails. Because Larian really did think up almost every conceivable scenario as things start going wrong and wrong and wrong and wrong and wrong. And it's really funny as that stuff is happening. And I think that a lot of people are missing out because like, no, it needs to be perfect. And it's like, okay, fine. That's, you play your games how you want to play. I'm not going to tell people how to enjoy their games. But it's just a suggestion that people should sometimes try to live with their consequences because sometimes it's funny. I find it funny. Yeah, it's, uh, I had, uh, this reminds me of earlier. I was fucking, I went through like the entire, we get up to the Sphinx, like did everything there, did the Sphinx. 
And then as I was fighting her, Sirash bonked her in a way that she didn't like to be touched. And she left. And so I had, I was like, well, this means I can't kill the Sphinx. And I haven't killed the Sphinx before I really want to. So I had to take an in save. And I thought, in, in my mind, I was like, oh, I did everything oh. but the Sphinx. Nope. It was like, it was, it was like an hour of content that was just gone. Like, <laughs> hmm. But I mean, you know what? That's the choice I made. I didn't have to make that choice. Didn't you have to chose make that to choice. save scum and you got punished for it. That's what happened. I'm creating this while well, you've been talking. I've been creating this, this handy dandy little document, uh, breaking down the, uh, the different upgrades and stuff. Mm -hmm. Damn. Mm -hmm. Like next next video on Cowboys Channel sponsored by Conscast. <laughs> no, I'm not even gonna. I'm not even gonna make a video on this. I'm just gonna. I'm just gonna. It's it's a little. It's a very tiny clip, and I'm just gonna post it on uh, on Twitter, and I'll give it to you too, so you can also share it with people. There you go. See, doing doing content midway through the podcast. <laughs> Well, it's, about, it's, you know, talk about multitasking. We started talking about it and I'm like, this is something that I was unaware of. And now, and now your a, brain is like fully, fully maxed out on that, uh, on that min maxing juice. That's what happens, man. That's what happens. I get, I get a little, and then, little and min then to, max. And then to top it off, I started talking to you about rise of Ronan. <laughs> and I just, I just I mentally, mentally was like, eh. <laughs> All right, I think this is is good enough. Here you go. Right, where, where are you at in chat? Yeah. Where's the Discord at? I'll check. I'll check that stuff. So out. let's let's look. So Vernworth, uh, and that is that is looking at a staff and looking at a piece of gear. So it looks like Bach Batal will increase Bach, but or let's see. So Elvish. Elvish will increase magic defense and raw magic on the weapon. Vernworth is going to be balanced. Bach Batal is going to be a bigger emphasis around the strength. But the thing that's interesting is the carry weight goes up at Bach Batal compared to everything else, which will reduce the weight carried of yeah, the... Yeah, because uh, Bach Batal stuff is in intended for like warriors and stuff like that, I guess. I just find it funny because... You know, carry weight. I mean, I would, I would probably take that more raw defense. I don't know. This is interesting. I'm gonna tweet it on out. This is this is good. It's good info. But yeah, I mean, that's pretty much all I had for the podcast. To be honest, God like, damn it, Rory. Dragon's Dogma Two and Rise of Run. I'm sorry, I screwed up your training session. Yeah, I'll, I I'll text him. That. I didn't mean to do that, dude. Uh. <laughs> Cowboy's trying to get his workout going. I'm like, no, wait, 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 <laughs> wait, 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 wait. <laughs> so yeah, we're gonna we're gonna wrap this up, guys. Uh, thank you all very much for watching. Uh, it it took this one took a little bit longer. I wanted to do it closer to launch, but I had actually we, we didn't even we didn't even talk about. I remember you were like, we need to talk about all the drama. We never even really talked about the drama. We did. We talked about the drama at the beginning. I mean, but no, but is, is there something else you want to bring up? Let's go. Because, like... I just, I just think it's funny that the, the, the drama, when the drama peaked, it, it was, was I mean, the culmin fucking... The culmination of the drama, to me, was you and Asmongold in a, in a call. Which is yeah, something no, that, that I, was, that I was never, the I never expected to see you in Asim and Gold in a call. Well, so, so, and I think part of it is, is it was the way shit had been edited by his editor, and it, from from based on the call, he wasn't even aware of shit that was getting. Oh, yeah, edited. he, he does. You you don't know because you don't watch a lot of his stuff, but like he doesn't look at anything that the editors do. Like he's always blind. So this isn't the first time that this happened. Oh god! <laughs> no! 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 <laughs> like, every now and then somebody comes along and is like hey asman like you need to rein those guys in. Yeah. and he goes in there and he's like okay boys you took it a little bit too far again <laughs> let's rein it in a little bit that's, that's kind of that's, how it goes that's wild to me because like mm. his his editors the, the thing is what they do is they look at the algorithm and they're like they're looking at the matrix code right 
And they're like, okay, yeah. if we do this, number go up. And they don't yeah. care what the this is. <laughs> they're like, number go up? Good. <laughs> and there they go. I mean, it's not exactly like that. I'm exaggerating a little bit, but it, it kind of is, yeah. It's just like they edit the stuff and they put the most appealing title that's going to get people to click and people go and they do it. That's how it goes. Oh, man. But that was funny. <laughs> yeah, that was a uh, shit show. No, I think I think the call wasn't a shit show. I heard no, no, the call the call wasn't a shit show, but the lead up to it was a shit show because <laughs> yeah, that the was to it was weird. Yeah, I, I had to do my my angry dad rant online, which was probably probably unnecessary, but you know sometimes you just gotta. Dude, that was that was wild. That that rant you were like you were going hard. <laughs> I I, well, so, I don't think I had ever seen you that upset. Like a, a lot of people also said the same thing like i've never seen cowboy this upset this is insane that, well part of it i, I went i went to a, a comedy show and then i'm like trying to enjoy the comedy show and the whole time my phone's just blowing up with people that are like just talking shit and i get home and i'm like i'm gonna lay into these fuckers so i'm like wait I'm are done. you sitting at a comedy show the 700 dollars comedy show you told me about no no <laughs> this 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 one this one uh the tickets were cheap it was like uh 70 bucks <laughs> But he, he just texted me. He said he's down for squats. So I got to go because it's squat time. Okay, 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 okay. Okay, okay. Guys. The legs uh, don't wait. Thank you all very much for watching this episode of Conscast. Cowboy's going to go work out, but we were pretty much just shooting the shit at this point anyways. If you guys enjoyed it, do remember, hit the like button, subscribe, bell notification, icon, all that jazz. There's links to Cowboy stuff, and there's going to be I... videos for guides and dragons along with all that stuff. And I'll see you guys in the next one. Stay strong, stay safe. Peace out.